This is Dr. Charles Denham speaking on behalf of a rapid response team of the MedTech Bystander Rescue Care Program. We've launched a community of practice for critical infrastructure workers and families in the general public to deal with the coronavirus crisis. We're producing a series of videos, webinars, and presentations to deal with the challenges. The purpose of this video is to help the general public understand why a certain number of coronavirus victims may have a severe form of the disease and require hospital care and even intensive care. That may even require the use of what is called a respirator or something called extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, or ECMO for short. This is a treatment that uses a pump to circulate blood through an artificial lung and the reoxygenated blood back into the bloodstream. Dr. Sanjay Gupta of CNN and Dr. Anthony Fauci of the Institutes of Health have been two of our best sources of the science-grounded and evidence-based advice. The following segment of a video piece by Dr. Gupta helps us understand the severe lung problems that can develop. That's the coronavirus you're looking at. As it enters healthy cells, it uses the cells to make copies of itself, and then the infection spreads. It also triggers the immune system to try to kill the virus and attack infected cells, including ones in the lungs. That battle inside the body causes inflammation, and in severe cases, that inflammation can lead to pneumonia, organ failure, or even septic shock. Especially for high-risk people, any or all of those can eventually lead to death. Early in the crisis, many more patients were put on respirators. However, physicians around the world are learning better and better ways to save patients from having to go on respirators. The sickest patients may have to receive ECMO care, and one of the biggest limitations is the number of machines that are available for those patients. The patients who have this severe lung condition develop a stiffness in their lungs. This makes it hard for them to breathe on their own. A respirator provides air at a pressure that expands the lungs and allows them to relax and allow oxygen to be exchanged with carbon dioxide, which is so critical to our vital organs. Since we do not have any form of treatment for coronavirus, patients may have to rely on respirators for a number of days until they get over the infection. So who will need a respirator? When people develop fever, a cough, and shortness of breath, they need to seek medical care. They may already be slipping down the slope to severe illness. When they're seen by caregivers, they'll have a multitude of tests and they'll have a test for coronavirus. They may have a CAT scan or a CT scan, which shows very characteristic images for coronavirus. Fortunately, only a fraction of people will need intensive care. Although they're more likely to be seniors with certain underlying conditions, more young people than we originally thought will suffer severe illnesses. The concept of flattening the curve is a goal we hear continually. This goal is to do everything we can to reduce the peak numbers of coronavirus victims who will hit our healthcare system at the same time. With a surge of patients at the same time, we will run out of three things, space, caregivers, and equipment. Space means hospital beds and especially ICU beds. Caregivers means we will not have enough caregivers to take care of all the patients. And what will make it worse is that a number of the caregivers will get sick and be out of the game. We've seen that in Europe. Equipment not only means personal protective equipment such as masks, but it also means respirators and ECMO for the sickest patients who can't breathe on their own. One of the biggest limitations are qualified staff to run these machines. There are concerning reports coming out of France and Italy about some young people getting seriously ill and very seriously ill in the ICUs. Well, yesterday was probably one of my worst days that I've ever had. Why? And I got 10 calls all of whom young people who otherwise would be excellent candidates to be able to put on ECMO. If they, they're so sick that if they don't get put on, they don't get that support, they're probably going to die. I had three beds. And just in making that decision, being able to figure out who, who really is going to benefit, it, it is a level of uh, decision making that I, I don't think uh, a lot of us are prepared for. Those calls coming from other hospitals across South Texas with patients so sick that Methodist may be their last hope. Methodist Hospital uses a procedure to oxygenate the blood and keep patients off ventilators. It's called ECMO or extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. Today, Dr. Della Volpe is inserting large tubes in the veins of a 33-year-old. 
They run from the groin all the way to the heart. The blood comes out of the body, is mechanically oxygenated, then returned back to the heart almost immediately. The Methodist team have had a lot of practice, the procedure taking only a few minutes. It involves being able to take uh, large cannulas. They're, they're almost like small, small garden hoses, is how I would describe them. They have to be able to pump about two, two or three gallons of blood uh, uh, per minute uh, through them. So one, one is draining blood out and the other one is returned. The blood coming out of the patient is dark. It just looks unhealthy. The blood returning is bright red, loaded with oxygen. Almost immediately, oxygen level in the patient's blood goes back to near normal. Their chance of survival now better than if they were on a ventilator. I think the ventilator really causes a lot of harm. And we're, we're finding that it causes harm in general, but it certainly causes harm when we're talking about patients with COVID. Because their lungs are so weak to begin with? Because their lungs are so weak and because probably there's other reasons why patients are having trouble. The ventilator is pushing oxygen into the lungs. That's right. Into damaged lungs. That's right. So not only are you having all of the problems with the blood vessels and the clotting in, in your blood vessels, not only are you having all of the problems of oxygen not being able to get to your organs and your organs shutting down from that, but now you're artificially pushing air into your lungs and causing more damage that way. Another hard lesson of the pandemic and a virus healthcare providers everywhere are still struggling to understand. We don't quite understand why one person um, with lab values of X does well, while a person with lab values that appear to be better doesn't make it. And a mask is not a big ask to help save your life. What's your message to the young people out there who think they're invincible? Well, look, I mean, I think a lot of, we're dealing with the novel virus. A lot of the, what we heard initially out of China, very early data was that, uh, you know, this was primarily something that just affected older people. As more and more people have been infected around the world, a clear picture of this virus and what it does is, is emerging. Uh, for example, some of the young people who contracted the virus in China recovered. Now they're being examined a month, two months later, and they're finding that in some of those patients, they have 20 to 30 percent decreased lung function. They have ev evidence of scarring in the lungs, which is, you know, a more permanent form of damage. They are listed as recovered. That's true. They, they are recovered. But, you know, it, it, it definitely left its toll on, on some of these young people as well. So recovery doesn't mean they didn't get sick. And, and, and I think that's a really important point. As we have seen, timing is everything. Everyone can help flatten the curve. There is a role for each one of us to play in protecting ourselves, our families, and the community as a whole. The care of our communities is absolutely critical. Thank you for all you're doing to protect those at risk and those who are most vulnerable. As we say to all of our MedTAC bystander rescue care teams, we have to fight the good fight, finish the race, and keep the faith. Everyone is a patient and everyone can be a caregiver.